Hi everyone, this is Eric. Welcome to Divine Conversations. Thank you so much for joining me yet again. Um, I have some time and I'm feeling up for it. I uh, do have the energy. So I am here bringing us Twin Flames some extra readings, yeah? This one is going to be a discussion about current uh, mental challenges that the twins are, are facing. Um, and I'm doing this in a way which, um, I'm going to be doing, I'm not separating, I'm not separating it between divine masculine and divine feminine. Um, so the cards that I pull, I'm going to do my best to channel, um, information and see things from both points of view so that I can bring forward, um, you know, the best messages in relation to it. As we go through this reading and the main reason why I'm not splitting it between divine masculine and divine feminine, like I'm not do pulling two separate sets of cards for each, um, is because I want, uh, uh, well, not just I, the, um, spirit universe is asking me to do this in a way so that, um, it, you, the viewer, um, are able to understand things from both perspectives for yourself. Okay. Um, this is all in service of bringing union, um, bringing union toward, together within, okay? After I do this reading, I'm going to do, um, I think, well, hmm, I'm going to stop myself there. <laughs> Let's just start with this reading, Eric. Don't get, don't get ahead of yourself, okay? So, everybody settle in. Uh, grab yourself a glass of wine, a cocktail, smoke them if you got them, whatever, get comfy. Let's have a good old conversation. Yeah? Excellent. So, um, I've already prayed, you know, and, uh, uh, cleared the space, brought in angels and all that. So let's just get straight to it. Spirit, please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective. Please bring forward the best messages for both Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine in relation to the current mental challenges that we are facing. What is causing us to block union within, mentally? Thank you, Spirit. All right, guys, so if you've been following me for a while, um, you will recognize this. I'm basically doing a mental snapshot reading, um, and those, I believe, I am still offering that. Um, I'm still offering that. I'm not sure, but it should be in the description box if I am. Um, and honestly, this reading, it would be really good um, to, like, say, if you're challenged by something and you really want to get down, you know, get down and dirty with you know, what's blocking you mentally or what's challenging you mentally, this would be a really good reading to go for. And so this is the reading I'm doing for the collective right now. I am starting with the um, Oracle of Visions deck by Ciro Marchetti. And then I'm going to get into some other Oracle decks to get some more information, yeah? Okay, so what are we currently facing as twin flames? What are our mental challenges right now? What are we? What is blocking us from reaching union within, from a mental point of view? There we go. Okay, one more shuffle. All right, so here we go, guys. Let's get into this, yeah? Our overall energy, aha, hoo Okay, we have card number 52. And the first, 444, yay, the first thing I heard <laughs> when I saw this card is, is conformity, and I just heard it again, conformity. This is a huge challenge for 
the Twin Flame Collective right now, okay? Um, I know personally on my journey, now speaking, speaking personally, I'm not trying, I'm not speaking on like behalf of my twin. I'm talking about for me personally. Conformity has always been something I have fought very hard against. Um, whether I was, you know, just internally fighting it or now as, as I am, uh, 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 excuse me, <laughs> I'm a little tongue tied at the moment. Um, whether it was like when I was just fighting it internally and just being defiant in, within, but still going along with it or now later in life and like up until now where I'm actively fighting against it, um, in the name of authenticity, this has always been something that we've been really challenged by. And I'm also an indigo. And so we're not really ones that really like to conform. We kind of do things our own way. So right now, a big challenge for the Twin Flame Collective is fighting this conformity. Um, we do have, okay, so here we go. I'm gonna take, yeah, cause that was, okay. And so two messages from underneath the deck. We also have balance. And that makes perfect sense, right? Because we're trying to come into union with it. Okay, and so having balance be the second message here um, really kind of makes sense. Now, I want to point something out. Before I, before I continue with what I was saying before, I want to point something out. The way these two cards came out, you see how this woman is pointing towards balance? Okay. Another aspect of this conformity is forced balance. Balance that is <clears throat> sought, but from, again, from a place of inauthenticity. Um, I used to follow, or I used to, uh, to uh, watch different functionals videos. Uh, I don't know her name. Um, she really hasn't posted in a while. But um, I used to I, I used to watch her videos. I resonated with her for a little bit, and there was one video um, where she spoke about. I mean, she spoke about this often um, because it's part of her journey, and she's very open about it. And I believe she's trying to um, help people in this in this way. But she spoke of her bipolar diagnosis, um, and I was I have also been uh, diagnosed bipolar. So I really resonated with her on many things that she was saying. One of the main thing, one of the things that really stuck in my mind was this need to quote medicate ourselves in order to be functional parts of society, uh, or functional individuals in, within society. And the the kicker with that is a lot of the time when we medicate ourselves in this way, we don't we're not really making ourselves feel better. We're not really, um, um, what, what, what am I looking for here? We're not really dealing with the issue that we're having because from my point, from uh, honestly, in my opinion, from my point of view, these issues that we're having that we're trying to medicate away actually really stem from an energetic situation, not necessarily a physical one, but we can talk about that later. But um, when we medicate ourselves in these ways, we're not really making ourselves better. We're not always dealing with the situation, but we can function. Well, well, can you, can you like get up and go to work now? Well, yeah, but I still feel like shit. Well, that doesn't matter because now you can get up and go to work. <laughs> Forced, imposed balance rather than balance in the form of authenticity, okay? This is a major, I mean, I keep looking at this card number 52 and I keep hearing conformity. And that even goes for walking this twin flame path. Whereas if you try to talk to friends or family, colleagues, whatever, that are not walking this path, even if you're speaking to like another clairvoyant, a psychic, you're getting a reading from someone and they're not, they don't identify with the twin flame journey, many of them will try to say, well, oh, why are you, why are you holding out for this person? Why are you pursuing this person when they're not even getting, when they're not even responding to you? They blocked you. They're this, that, they're mean, they're, they're being awful, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
And so they try to get you to say, you know what, do the right thing by yourself and go find somebody else. But that comes from a place of, of conformity as well. Um, because we have this, uh, we have this preconceived notion and I want to say misconception also of what a real relationship should be. Now, I'm not saying that anyone should be in an abusive relationship. No, that's not the case. But there is more to um, two people coming together than just superficial things on the surface. And just because things, are, just because they, someone on the outside may not see everything that's going on and they're not really real, uh, experiencing it, that doesn't really mean they know exactly what's best. I feel like I'm going down a, a rabbit hole with that situation, but I, but you guys, you guys understand where I'm coming from. Um, so this is the overall message, okay? From a masculine point of view, there needs to be, well, for all of us, uh, even from a feminine point of view, there needs to be balance, but from a masculine point of view, um, we have been in a heavily patriarchal society, 1111. Um, and, you know, the pendulum has swung towards patriarchy after swinging out of matriarchy way back in the day, <laughs> you can say. Um, but now we're in kind of like the downswing of patriarchy. And from a masculine point of view, uh, even if you're, even if you're like a, a feminine like me, a, a, from a masculine point of view, there is there is this desire, there's this deep desire to come into balance. Oh, oh my goodness. And do you know what I just realized? We have a feminine figure and a masculine figure. Okay? And so it's a little more significant that this feminine figure is pointing at the masculine figure, the way I have the cards set up here. This is the way they came out also. But, um... And this goes right along with what I was saying. There is a desire from the masculine point of view to bring masculinity and femininity into balance, femininity, excuse me, into balance. And from what I can see here, what's being shown to me just in these two cards, this is really being facilitated by femininity, okay? It's, it's being accelerated, we'll say. Um, bringing the truths about who we are as beings is coming into play, is bringing, being brought into balance. Who, the truth about masculinity and, and femininity is coming, is, is really coming into balance. And so from a feminine point of view, the, the, the real message of conformity comes out. Um, for many feminine energies, or just women in general, because you could be a woman and still be a masculine energy, but you still experience the conformity aspects of our culture that have kept women, and I'm just going to say it this way because this is the way I felt it, bare, at home, barefoot, and pregnant. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. And I mean, it just gives me, it just makes me feel icky just saying that, but that's kind of what we're dealing with here, or that's what the, the feminine has been dealing with in this time in this time frame of humanity. And now, so just like as the masculine is balancing out with uh, who they truly are and coming to terms with who they truly are on a multitude of levels, so too now the feminine is starting to step forward because I really feel like I'm picking up a lot of energy that the feminine really kind of knew who she was all along. I feel like it's the masculine that kind of deluded himself into thinking that he's less than what he truly is. And I say that, and, and, and that sounds weird and confusing because, um, you know, twisted masculine energy is full of vibrato, pride, ego. But in reality, all of that is masking the, 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 the lack that... Um, the lack that they're facing in rejecting femininity, right? So as a feminine then, I mean, and this is why I feel like feminine energy, the feminine has always really known its truth 
but was not allowed to express it. Because throughout history, you have women that have really stepped up in masculine roles, have really tried to step up in masculine roles. But there, but whereas for the for the masculine, stepping into a feminine role was, I mean, there were both sides stepping into their opposite ends was, was hearsay, was just like unheard of. But I mean, think of the, the fight that is put up by a masculine energy when being um, identified as feminine or or being tied to feminine identities. Do you get what I'm saying? Like that ego flare, right? So this is the balance that needs to be stricken. This is where, this is the, um, the conformity that needs, that has, that has really twisted all of us, twisted us all up. Um, is really coming into view. We're really starting to understand that. I honestly, I was going to pull more cards from this deck, but I think that hit, nails it right there. So um, what I do want to do next is I want to pull some clarifiers here for these two cards. So Spirit, please give us some clarifiers for these two cards here. I can't, I, I swear, I swear guys, this can't be too more, like too much more perfect. The fact that we got two cards, and while I was shuffling, I was being told that I was being told that there are going to be two cards coming out from underneath the deck, and I wasn't so sure about that, but I went along with it, and then I realized we have a masculine fi figure and a feminine figure. Yeah, I, that's that's just really cool. I love it when stuff like that happens. All right, spirit. So please give us some clarifiers here for these two cards and for what we're discussing. One more shuffle. Okay. So we're going to start with card 52, what I'm labeling as conformity. Now, it's. It, I just want to say also before I move forward, this card, neither of these cards are really all that bad, okay? Um, depending on your perspective. Like, this looks like it's bad, but this also has a bit of, I mean, as I'm speaking this, I'm being reminded that here the message is conformity. But I'm also, I'm also wanting to express that this, almost, the energy of this card almost feels like the energy of the emperor, okay? Um, granted, we have a feminine figure on this card, um, but... To me, this can also look like um, controlling an issue in a sense of trying to move it forward, right? Like trying to achieve forward movement. So conformity, in a sense, or a control of the situation, to a certain extent, is needed. But overall, we're trying to get into balance here, and we are too focused on fitting in and being a, quote, functional member of society instead of living from a place of authenticity and doing what it is we truly love and being who we truly are, right? Which, in all cases, whether you're a man or a woman, there we are both, we are all a combination of masculine and feminine energy, okay? All right, so clarifiers for card 52. Just two cards, please, Spirit. Woo! All right. I'm going to take that one because that one like really flew. I'll put these back. Okay. One more card, please, Spirit. There it is. Perfect. Okay. So the first card that came out is the sun in reverse with, ah, yeah, look at that. The King of Pentacles in reverse. Okay, like look at this, guys. This is exactly, this is exactly, exactly, exactly what I was just talking about. Patriarchy. Needing to release this overemphasis in masculine energy. There can, you wouldn't, and this is, uh, wow, the messages are really coming through right now, guys. We, You could not have existence if you didn't have both masculine and feminine. So, now, please understand that from what I've read, the little, little bit of research that I've, I've come across 
uh, or information that I've come across in relation to this swing of the pendulum between from matriarchy at first to patriarchy to where we are now. If you have more information on this, if you have some reading materials, I would love to see it. If you want to leave it down in the description box, I would really appreciate that. But, um, I mean, from what I understood, from the little bit that I read about it, when we were in a matriarchal society, it was very similar to patriarchy in the sense that women took over, feminine energy was ru ruled, and in some extreme cases, I, I, I read that men were really just looked at <laughs> as sperm donors, <laughs> which, is, which is pretty awful. But when you think about it now, in the in the the opposite end of the spectrum now that we're in the patriarchal end of, of things women are were seen as the homebodies that really just took care of had kids took care of the, took care of the home and the family like four children and so i'm not gonna say that's all that wrong because as a feminine energy i am i am much more interested in um in things like like cooking and being being a homebody and doing things around the home like that in the, in in relate or uh, um uh, uh I'm what is the word I'm looking for oh as opposed to being the go getting masculine you know what I mean so uh, it's not completely wrong but at the same time the controlling aspect of things, the inability to allow people to do something that resonated more with them, even though it did not fit into that role that they had been pigeonholed into, is what we're talking about here. So what I'm seeing here with the sun in reverse, it's like the sun was shining and like all this light is being shown and people are being led to believe that um, the light that is being required to follow, hello, required to follow, is the right thing when it's not. Patriarchy, I just heard it again. I mean, it's not. Why? Because it lacks authenticity. It, okay, here's an example that just came to mind. Our current school system for young kids, it doesn't work for everybody. And I, I really hope I'm not, I, I, if any of you out there, any of my subscri subscribers, or if you're new and you're just jumping onto this and you're just finding me, I, and you're, you work in the education system, 2222, and, you know, or whatever, you're a teacher or whatever, I hope I am not, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but I'm speaking from my own experience here. I did not do well in school. Now, granted, I had a lot of emotional and mental imbalances, um, and physical imbalances, like I have food uh, uh, intolerances that I didn't even know about until like maybe six or seven years ago. Okay, um, so that was working against me, but I really didn't do well in school. But I was required to follow this system. But the system was set up for people that do well sitting in class being lectured all day. I don't. I learn by doing. I have... Since, since I left, since I graduated high school, I did not go to college, but since I graduated high school, um, over the, Lord, 12 years since it's been, since I've graduated high school, I have taught myself various things and excelled in them. But I, I taught myself and I taught myself by, yeah, reading about it, but also doing not sitting in a classroom being lectured by some, you know what I mean? And I'm not trying to say that that is wrong, but what I'm saying, I'm saying is in relation to this conformity. Well, you're going to, well, this is how we do it. So you're going to have to learn this way. No, no, no. How about you, you invest a little more into that child and say, okay, how, let's figure out the best way for you to learn. And then let's work from there. Right. Okay. That was just an example of the sun shining and being told that you have to follow this way because this is the right way when no, no, not necessarily. Okay. Getting the message. That's great. All right. So let's get, um, two cards for balance here, please. Spirit. Oh, my laundry's done. Yay. <laughs> 
Sorry, guys. All right, uh, balance. Two cards, please. We've got Temperance in reverse. Look at that. Now, that is a major arcana, and it speaks directly to balance, okay? Uh, and it's in reverse, so here we go. And then, now this one came out sideways. I'm gonna pull it this way, ah! But I'm gonna, but it's coming, I'm gonna keep it sideways, but it's death. And what I'm picking up here is, um, Because these, what I'm talking about, what I'm talking about here are our challenges right now, okay? Our challenges towards um, reaching union within, the mental hangups here. So when it comes to balance, obviously we're imbalanced because we've, we've got temperance in reverse, okay? Um, but there's a heavy dose of resistance here. And this is absolutely related to... Um, what came out in my last weekly video discussion um, for Twin Flames in Separation, titled Not for the Faint of Heart. Um, but it's like we're in limbo here. We're in limbo because, um, and before I finish this statement, I wanna, I wanna say that I did in fact say this was a Twin Flame video in the beginning, but I'm realizing now that this is actually for just about everybody. But if you are a twin flame, um, this is supposed to help you understand greater so that you can move forward a little more on your mission work. Okay, so with that said, um, I feel we're like stuck in this limbo of this supposed balance, this imposed balance from the outside, okay, which is in the form of this conformity. We are required to balance ourselves out in a certain way. Instead, in a certain way, um, uh, excuse me here, uh, the words are escaping me. In a certain way that has been developed or ordained, we'll say, yeah, ordained by people that are outside of us that don't even know us from Adam or Eve, but yet still think that they can control who we are and what we do. Now, granted, there needs to be some sort of structure of society. We don't want chaos going out, you know. But for the most part, we required, we're required. we pretty much required to do things in a certain way. And it's very much like the, air, the, the, um, the emperor in the tarot, in the, modern, in, the, in the traditional tarot, but reversed. Just like I was saying, this, the card 52 here was reminding me of the emperor. I'm seeing this as overall, this is an emperor in reverse energy. And, what, and, and so we're imbalanced, we need to get balanced. And we're in this period of death and transformation, but there's a lot of refusal. And so this is why, um, so the, the death is coming out sideways because it's like, well, do I want to change? Or do I not want to change? Do I want to change? Or do I not want to change? And what's <laughs> what's also coming through here is like I don't want this to be all bad. Like those of us who are staying within this conformity are not necessarily bad. They're not necessarily doing anything wrong, but it's comfortable for them because in in accepting and embracing this change. Um, you step out of your comfort zone, you know, you, you step into the unknown and that can be scary. It really can be scary. So that is also a reason why this structure has been put into place. Yeah. Because well, for fear of the unknown, it's just that, I mean, I've already said a lot of what I wanted to say, but, or what was coming through, but it's, I, I feel like I might be at this point, I might be, um, repeating myself, but yeah, but spirit just keeps saying conformity, conformity. Choose for yourself is what they just said. Don't let others choose for you. Well, who, oh, whose life are you living? Yours or theirs? Okay. I want to pull some more. I want to get that. I'm going to ask. Okay. So in relation to this spirit, I want to pull from the Oracle of the unicorns here. Um, and I'm going to ask, I'm asking here, give us, some, please give us some guidance in, in terms of action steps that we can take 
in order to break free from this, in order to break free from these restraints that are keeping us. And, and okay, so this conformity now in relation to, um, because twin flames are not the only ones that need to come into union within. You know what I mean? Like this is, this is universal. This is, yeah, this is everybody. But um, in relation to this, in relation to not being able to reach this union within, we have limbo because death in reverse is talking to me about limbo. And I'm not reverse, it's sideways. It's talking to me about, it's saying limbo to me. And we're in this limbo because we have this war going on between the sexes. When, because um, when one, is, one has been tr trying to control the other, which then pisses the other off and then the other tries to control the first and it's just like this vicious cycle. And instead of trying to control each other, we should really be working on understanding each other and working together. I just heard codependency and not in a good way. Um, ah, manipulation. This is another aspect of this control that's being um, represented here by 50, card number 52. Situations have been created in which one has had in a sense had no choice but to accept a codependent relationship on the other now this could be both masculine this could be um the masculine putting this forward or this could be the feminine putting this forward this is this is on both sides and i did say choice that uh, had didn't really have a choice um you always have a choice but it, when it comes to like survival um you know, your health and happy and, and somewhat of happiness, you know, your safety. Sometimes you have to, you have no choice but to conform, which would be the codependent aspect of that situation. Yes? Wow. There's a lot of truth coming out here, guys. All right. So one more shuffle. And then uh, Spirit, please some 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 action steps that we can take to bring this balance within um yeah i'm just gonna okay one more please spirit top okay okay what am i looking for Ah, there it is. Boop. All right, so we've got hope, goddess, and anger. Interesting. Okay, so obviously, hope is really quite uh, self-explanatory. Hope, stay positive. The worst is behind you. Look up to the light. Um, and the, this phrase, the worst is behind you, is really standing out to me here. Because we really are in a moment excuse me, where we're moving away from, um, we're moving away from a lot of the really, the, the thick of this controlling aspect to our world and our society right now. Um, and I say that because there are a lot, there are a ton of people that have been awakened to this, that are currently awakening, uh, are, are currently awakening to this, um, and are rebelling and are moving forward with their lives in a more authentic way and not really letting, um, we'll call it the man, tell them what to do. And it's so funny because I haven't really used that phrase, the man, um, in the very, I can't even remember the last time I've used that phrase, but it's so perfect right now. Why? Because we have this patriarchal thing, situation going on where we're being controlled by the man, you know? Right, you got it, you got it, next. <laughs> this can't be any more perfect guys the second card that came out is goddess and it says honor your divine feminine energy see your inner beauty love every part of you and this really goes for both sides masculine needs to honor their inner feminine energy and feminine needs to have I just heard pride and I don't mean from an egotistical point of view. I'm saying, like, be proud to be a feminine energy. I know I am. I'm also proud to be 
a feminine energy in a masculine form. I love that. To me, that's like ultimate, like that's, that's an insane amount of balance right there. As same goes for a masculine energy in a, a feminine form. It's like another, it's like an, another form of, of balance there. That's, that's kind of a, sorry, that's a, <laughs> that's a tangent. But anyway, like, so, so what really needs to be focused on right now is accepting the feminine aspects of yourself and, and, and not, and not, um, focusing so heavily, heavily on masculine proper, uh, characteristics. Because, I mean, you can, you can focus on, on one or the other, but you'll be missing out on serious potential if you, if you don't honor both sides. So right now, we are in a period where we really need to heal the wounds associated with the feminine energy. And, and to, really, to really balance it out, the heals that the feminine energy, or I'm sorry, the wounds that the feminine energy are experiencing, are, are have retained or have obtained, we'll say, are also the wounds of, of the masculine energy too. But right now we are so engrossed in a patriarchal, um, masculine dominating point of view that we, ha in order to bring this into balance, we have to accept the feminine side of things. We just do. There's no way around it. Finally, uh, for action steps, we have anger. Safely express your anger. Use anger as a positive force. Honor all of your emotions as sacred. And so this absolutely has to do, especially with goddess that came out, because... Um, emotions are more of a feminine attribute and we have this um, negative uh, we have this misconception about the emotions like like if you're emotional it makes you weak and, but yet masculine energies will tap into anger and use it at their will and for their gain does, does that make sense like anger is an emotion too guys you know what I mean but all the, uh, but anyway that's one part of the message. But also another part of the message is that as we do this healing work, as we reconnect with the feminine within um, and, you know, start healing these wounds, there's going to be some strong emotions coming through. And most likely there's going to be a hell of a lot, a hell of a lot of anger. So this card is really, is also a caution, as it says, safely express your anger, safely but honor all of your emotions as sacred. So if anything comes up that, that, you know, regardless of the emotion, but like in terms of anger, because that's what came up here. And to be honest, that, that, um, that has been a driving, a leading emotion in humanity. There are so many situations that humans have gotten themselves into within our recent history that have been driven by anger. And not in the sense that, okay, this has made me angry. What can we do to make this better for everybody? No, it's from a point of view of this made me angry. Now I'm gonna take all that anger and put it out on and, and use and, and uh, let it out on, on you or whoever and destroy you with it. Instead of building each other up, we're using it to destroy. So we need to get in control of that. We need to understand that anger is, <laughs> I just heard deadly, when directed in the wrong ways. I feel like this is an emotion, this card came out specifically because this is an, an emotion that we really need to keep a watchful eye on, okay? And we really need to work on doing using it in the proper ways. So using it as a, uh, as, again, use anger as a positive force. Um, directing it towards a solution, channeling it and directing it towards a solution that 
will benefit people, will facilitate healing, will facilitate growth and expansion, instead of using it to, to tear something down and destroy. That's really more of an egoic way of handling anger. Anger, Yes? Okay. Last message is going to come from the Crystal Mandala deck. Oops. One more shuffle here. All right. So, Spirit, I'm seeing two messages. There are two. One and okay. No, no, I got three, and that's okay. I'm going to keep them. Right? I got three. Yeah, I got three. So we have huh, goodwill, empowered service, and grace for the grand gesture. Wow. Oh, guys, this is beautiful. So, um, and I am going to tap into the book here because I want to make sure I don't miss anything. But, <laughs> wow. So the first one we have is goodwill. Goddess Gaia and Ocean Jasper? Yes. So Gaia is showing up in here, and Gaia is bringing forth a message. Um, and she and she actually landed right on hope. Like, that's she's positioned right on top of hope. So Gaia is saying, please, please remain hopeful, as hopeful as you can, because that's really going to help drive all of this forward. Do not, um, she says, do not release yourself into despair, for all is not lost and never will be. Thank you, Gaia. <laughs> okay, so in the book, I'm just going to read like the beginning of these. Okay, Goddess Gaia and Ocean Jasper, goodwill. We bring you the empowerment of goodwill. There is a type of spiritual power you can co-create, which benefits and protects you whilst mutually empowering others to take their journey and experience divine success. The spiritual power known as goodwill is generated by how you feel inside and the attitude you cultivate towards others. When you know you have value, it is easy to recognize the value in another. When you feel encouraged by the universe, it is easy to encourage others. As you put out support, encouragement, and goodwill for the success of all beings, this energy is amplified and returned to you. And this is exactly what I was speaking to about um, honoring the authentic authenticity in someone else instead of get control instead of willing them to conform to yours or someone else's view of who or who they should be or how they should act right right that's that's beautiful okay the next card that we have is Empowered Service, Ascended Master, Yogananda, and Rodanite. Okay, uh, this is talking, obviously this is talking about being of service. Um, I'm getting an unconditional love vibe because of the pink color. Um, a, a, an acceptance, you know, accepting, yeah, being accepting of those who are different and still being of service to them, which ties into goodwill. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the book here. Oh, here we go, okay. Empowered service. We bring you the blessing of empowered service. It's your time to assume, yes, assume your place in the world at the table of the masters who serve the loving hand of the divine. You have been asking for your purpose to be more clearly unveiled and man manifested in the world. You have endured lessons of patience. You have learned that spiritual progress can be made even without results being immediately obvious. You have learned trust and a willingness to surrender your personal desires into a larger plan. We know that of which you are capable, and we now invite you to step into the next level of empowered service available to your soul in service to the greater plan of love, of divine love unfolding. 
And actually this, as I was reading that, this card was speaking to me, was saying to me, it was like speaking directly to the twin flame path, the twin flame journey. Um, in the sense that, you know, we have to have faith and hope and in the knowing that for, 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 wow, 44, 44, um, in the knowing that ultimately, you know, man, union will manifest. You have to come into a place of detachment and knowingness, regardless of what's going on in your external reality. And that's kind of like manifestation 101 as well. But uh, as twin flames and as light workers, as torchbearers, we are here to help teach. Uh, part of our mission is here is to help teach um, people, teach the world about unconditional love and teach, help people get acclimated with the, you know, the, the laws of the universe and everything. But it's all, it, but also it was saying, it was talking about you have learned trust and willingness to surrender your personal desires into a larger plan. That to me speaks directly to, oh man, come on, Eric, pull it out. Where was it? Oh, surrendering, right. Sur surrendering the knowledge of what your, what your divine masculine or your divine feminine is doing. Surrendering to the process of healing and not having all the answers and not really, you know, and, um, I mean, you guys get it, but surrendering to it's the, the specifically surrender your personal desires into a larger plan, surrendering to, um, the will of the divine and just allowing it to bring things to you in divine timing. Surrendering your attachment towards um, a certain timeline that it's supposed to work out in or a certain way that it, anything, everything is supposed to work out in, you know, that kind of thing. And that literally speaks right to, in my opinion, it speaks right to the Twin Flame journey. So that's fantastic. So finally, we have Archangel Raphael and Malachite with grace for the Grand Gesture. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We bring you the gift of grace for the grand gesture. Although there are times when even the smallest act, such as choosing to think a positive thought, is enough to transform your world, there also comes a time for the leap of faith, the grand gesture of unconditional trust that will free you from the past and empower the universe to gift you with a new future. I want to stop right there before I forget <laughs> this point because there's a lot going through my mind right now and sometimes things get lost. But this is, all, this is speaking directly to that fear of change. This limbo we find ourselves in when coming into balance in the sense that, oh, do I want to change? Oh, maybe I don't. Oh, maybe I do. No, maybe I don't. And it's like you're a fear of stepping into the unknown, taking that leap of faith in, um, in accepting new ways. Right? I mean, it's speaking right to it. Uh, Yes, the grand gesture is the big step, the willingness to say to the universe, I trust you and I know it's time for life as I have known it to give way for a bigger, bolder experience and I am willing to allow you to lead me to it. You then make an offering which confirms your declaration and empowers the universe to reward the faith you have demonstrated. The grand gesture cannot be forced. If it comes from a place of, quote, should or uncertainty, then you are not ready. The grand gesture can get, no, I'm sorry. The grand gesture must be unconditional. It must be something you offer, not for what you can get in return, although the rewards will be rich, but because you are willing to offer something of yourself in service to love. When it comes from this place, the grand gesture is a trigger for divine grace and to express itself in your life in an entirely new way, surpassing all expectations and showering you with blessings. I really don't even want to say any more in relation to that because that just, that sums up everything we were talking about here so perfectly. So perfectly. All right, guys. So this actually... <laughs> I was really looking for, you know, challenges that um, we're facing as twin flames to 
towards coming into union within, because ultimately union within will bring union without in the external. But this just expanded into like this large discussion that I really feel like everyone, everyone in the world can benefit from this discussion, not just twin flames, because whether you're a twin flame or not, you will, in order to be a whole and complete being, you still need to balance your masculine and feminine energies. Everybody's got a mixture of them. And, and understand that just because, now this is another example of this conformity situation, just because balance between masculine and feminine looks a certain way in one person, doesn't, it's not going to look the same in another, right? So don't go running around, running around saying to people, oh, well, yeah, no, 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 you're not balanced with both masculine and feminine, no, because it, because it doesn't look like X, Y, and Z. No, that's exactly what we were talking about here. Allow people to be their authentic selves. You, I, I, I mean, I'm a reader. I'm a card reader. I'm intuitive. I'm empathic. I can pick up on things just by talking to people, just by looking at them. But I am not going to run around looking at people trying to tell them whether they are balanced or not. That is something they have to understand at their core. I would rather help them identify the things that they're struggling with or the things that they're struggling with seeing clearly. That, yeah, I will definitely do that. But I will not take it upon myself to, to preach to somebody or to tell them, well, you're not balanced. You need to get balanced. Because I am not that person. Yes, we're all one, but I am not in that person's mind. I am not of that person's mind. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what balance for them would be. So I say all that to say, be careful. Be very careful. Do not presume to know that you have all the answers for somebody. If you're intuitive and empathic and, and clairvoyant and you, you're picking up on something, okay, help them with it. But don't, please don't go running around you get it. Just please don't go running around trying to tell people something when you don't, when you may not necessarily know. That was something that I really wanted to come through. All right, guys. There you have it. I hope this was helpful. I really enjoyed doing this reading for you. I feel like this was a really good discussion. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you all again in the near future. Much love, guys. Bye.